Hey everyone, welcome to Norwood Sawmills. We got Trevor, our master sawyer here with me. Um, I'm Derek Tilly. And uh, today we're gonna be talking about some of the accessories. So welcome, we're sitting here in our Norwood showroom. Um, we have a beautiful log cabin. We're gonna be spending some time in to yep. answer some questions. So yep. first off, we just wanna say thank you guys so much for joining us on Facebook. Keep uh, bringing in some questions. So this is, this is not new to us anymore, but uh, some of you might be your first time joining in. So what we do is we have our marketing team watching our live feeds and basically they're, they're seeing your questions come in. So write in and then they're shooting them over to myself and Trevor and I will talk about those questions. Um, few things to go over before we do that. We want to show some and demonstrate some of our um, accessories that you guys can buy with our mills. Um, yeah. there's, there seems to be a lot of questions around those. Yeah, I think guys want to see them kind of uh, live too. Yeah. They're always, they always wonder about the production videos, you know? Yeah. So there's this way they get a little different, uh, a little different taste of it. Yeah, so. there's constant questions about that. So yeah. that's kind of what we want to do today is kind of go over those, yeah. really, really open it up to you guys so you can see how they work, see what they look like, see what what you may have questions about. Um, so yeah, shoot those questions over, they'll be coming in. Uh, one thing to talk about is we have an awesome promotion going on right now, guys. I don't know if many people know about this, but for the past month and a bit, we've been running a promotion. It's our fallback promotion. So we are in beautiful fall right now. So is it fall? It's fall. Okay. It's fall. All the leaves are gone. Okay. So what we're it almost, doing? It almost looked like it was kind of close to snow on outside. It's kind of, yeah. but still fall. Though. Let's not talk about that. Okay. 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 So <laughs> we're falling our prices back. You have value bundles that you can choose from. So give us a shout. Our phone number is one eight hundred five six seven zero four zero four. You can talk to any one of our specialists in the showroom. They're going to go over those promotions. They're going to go over those specials. It's a great time to buy. Right now, that promotion actually is over November 15th. So it's, uh, and, it's and it's bundles, right? It's like we're giving you free stuff. We're throwing prices and you back. You can choose like one, two, three. You can get this package, this package, this package. There's actually, you know what? Some of the accessories we're going to talk about yeah. are in part of those bundles. So you get them for free. So it's a great opportunity awesome. for you to see okay. how it works and <clears throat> possibly add that onto your mill with no additional cost. So let's uh, let's kind of talk about that. Like I said this promotion ends November 15th so really 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 uh, give us a shout time. it's crunch time crunch time you have You're take less than 10 days so a week and a half to go mm -hmm. so give us a shout we'll get you some quotes get you some prices and go over all those with you okay mm -hmm. you know what else is nice this time of year too people aren't always thinking of what what comes in 2019 New Year's everything goes up okay. well yes okay <laughs> <laughs> After that moment, <clears throat> you can see where my head's at. Everything gets more money the next year. Yes. Everything does. It doesn't matter what it is. So Prices go up. That's true. That's a good time to start looking, especially with value bundles and stuff. If you're on the fence, probably the right time. I didn't know that you were an accountant, too. No. No. Not an accountant. No, not. Definitely not. Not an accountant. No. Okay. Perfect. All right. Well, yeah. why, don't we, uh, why don't we talk about some of the accessories? Okay. Um, so well, I'll just kind of run, run you guys down. So we're going to actually talk about our rapid uh, rolling and dogging uh, set up for the yeah. LM29. Uh, yeah. We're gonna talk well, we about- we can use that on the HD2. We, we can use just, it on We're the gonna HD. show it on the 29 yeah. today. Okay. We're gonna talk about, <laughs> thank you. Okay. We're gonna talk about our automatic dogging assist. Uh, we're gonna talk about our log rest actuators, which are one of those value bundles. So yes. um, do you wanna start with the uh, rapid rolling and dogging system? Sure, we All can right. start over there. Yeah. So this is the rapid rolling and dogging system, uh, folks. It's not something that's utilized by everybody, but a lot of people that are specific in the industry to this size of tree, it works very well for. So it was developed more for guys that have um, what they call lodgepole pine or plantation pine. So those are the lots that you see, maybe somebody went in there you know, 15, 20 years ago, planted a whole bunch of seedlings, and now there's rows and rows of trees that are all you know, 12, 14 inches type size. Well, because those are all so consistent and because they're all fairly light, you can save a lot of time without having to use all the other dogging systems if you use this system here. So if you want, just because you're on that side, Derek, maybe over here, you can see how easy it is to pull it back and then just shove that bottom forwards. And that's, it. that's as easy as it is to hold that in position. Now, if you can pull that one back out of the way, bud. I'll pull that one back. We don't have a round log on here, so you're going to have to excuse us for that. We're just going to show you how this works. So it has rollers on it. So you can imagine if that was round, and there's also a roller on the back here. So if you had a round log on there and you grabbed it just by hand, you can just roll this around like this. Okay, and then when you're ready to cut, you shove that back over, it pinches itself on there, and then you go ahead and you make your next cut. It's a great, it's a great system for really 
boosting production. It is, and, it's, and specifically for that type of stuff. Um, a lot of guys look at this and they think, oh, that'll make it so much easier to move those great big logs. Definitely not what it was made for, but on that specific type of stuff, it works very, very well. So what, 12 to 14 inch diameter log roughly? 12 is to 14 ideal. is about the best, yeah. the best way to go for that, yeah. Awesome. So, Perfect. It's a great add-on, guys. So again, one of the things is we get a lot of calls that say, like, I want the rapid dogging and rolling system. So uh, what we should be doing and what we try and do is talk about what you're actually milling. So it, it's good for you to see what the system looks like and hear kind of what you want to be milling with it. Because a lot of guys will call in and say, I want it, but it doesn't necessarily fit their needs. Or they'll call in and not right. ask about it, but it fits their needs perfectly. Right, which is why I think a lot of the time when we're on the phone with guys, we get into a pretty good conversation with you. You know, We want to know what you're doing and why you're doing it, and it's so we can answer those questions properly, right? Yeah. You know, The other nice feature about this, too, is this is just slipped onto the deck and held in place with a couple of uh, bolts that are pinching it there, so it's easy to take on and off. So a lot of guys use this primarily to keep things, get things square real quick, and then they'll put the squares back on here when these are removed. Yeah. And shape them up to whatever they're cutting. So, Awesome. Well, yeah. thanks for running us through that, Trev. Welcome. Um, why don't we go over talk. We're going to go over to our bigger model, so our HD36 right over here, which we've done a lot of demonstrations on. But why don't we show you guys the automatic dogging assist and some of the features that we've got over here, okay? So let's do the, let's do the actuators first, because okay. then we're Perfect, not yeah. held in place. So I don't know if... Um, I can run them through a little bit because you won't really see it on that That's side. the thing is Cole's going to need to see what you're doing and then come around yeah. and see it from over here. So, so I'll, I'll just kind of explain to you guys. So we have our log rest and our log rest actuators are basically an accessory that goes on them um, that allow you to work everything from the operator's side. So it's a really great system for a one-man operation or someone who's looking at limiting how much they're running around the mill. Yeah. Um, the log rest actuators are a handle with uh, a long tube that goes across and works on a chain system. So it's hooked up to your log rest. And basically, just by turning, I can lower my log rest or I can raise my log rest from one side. And that's gonna adjust how, how tall your log rests are on either side so that you have a solid um, pressure point on that log. Yeah, well, so you're, you're the right height because um, you're constantly adjusting that because as your log shrinks, your log rests have to get less as well right so. and you can't just cut them off no and without that you're constantly running around either coming around that way or coming around this way or climbing over top to get at the lever to release them uh, the other uh, benefit to these is I've got a few guys that have uh, sold this machine to uh, that are handicapped that anything that can happen on that same operation side they're still running the machines which is uh, awesome mm -hmm. you know power um, but they're using those so that they can actuate the log rests up and down from that same side. They're not having to scoot around or whatever. So, you know. Yeah, maybe if we want to get a shot kind of from that side, I can show them yeah, how they're Cole, going up and down with just the turn Cole of the handle. Have a look there, yeah. So if you crank the handle. Yeah, I'll do, I'll do this one here. So that's moving it down. That's moving it up, and then just with the flip, the flip of a lever, locks it into place. Holds it back where it's supposed to be. And then there's one, there's one dial adjustment for each rest, correct? Yep. Okay. So, yeah. Perfect. So there's the log rest actuators, and they're actually one of the free value bundles. So a huge bonus with those to get those free and added on to your mill purchase before the 15th of November. Definitely. Um, really a large uh, added value in that. Most definitely. Most definitely. So do we want to, what else do we got to show? The auto dog, right? Yeah, let's show the auto dog. Yeah. So, okay, so a lot of guys will call in about this auto dog and I have a question about, look, what is the auto dog? Why do I use it? So maybe you can answer that and kind of show them. We'll show them how it works, but maybe you can answer that question. Well, a lot of the time, guys, when you're cutting um, and just the way this log is sitting right now, so it's sitting here, but you want it to sit there. And that's where you need it to be, because this say this is your first cut and you want to roll it over here. Well, every time you go to do that, it rolls back this little bit. So when you're working alone, it's very difficult to have, be able to hold the cant hook, keep it straight, keep the dog on there. It's a bit of an act, actually. A lot of the time you're sitting on this like you're actually going to ride it to make it go where you want it to be. So uh, what Norwood's done is we've developed this awesome little pointer arm here, and it leans and there's a bit of a learning curve to this, guys, and you kind of have to figure it out. Um, 
it sits here and it stabs into the log like that. So when you're working, you can turn this and it holds it there for you. Okay? Which, any of you that have been working alone, mill and lumber uh, for a little while now, will immediately appreciate what that's like. It's like having another guy around, is what it is. So it may not hold it perfect there for you every time, but what it's gonna do is it'll hold it close enough that when you come around to the other side, you can probably get enough pressure on it, either on the bottom or the top, just to tip it that extra little bit so that it's sitting perfect at that 90, yeah. right where you want it. So it's, it's a handy, handy device. Awesome, man. Yeah, I really like that one. I think it's $149 and it's worth well every worth single it. penny. Yep. So. Well, I, I think those are a few of the, the accessories that we kind of wanted to talk about, kind of show you guys how they work. Um, so you can see them in action. Uh, why don't we uh, go, we'll go have a seat, uh, talk a little bit. We'll go, we'll go to the log cabin. Let's go, let's go we'll to the go cabin. We'll go to the log cabin. Go we'll talk out. a little bit about some features in there and, and maybe answer some of your guys' questions because I know we have some that came in before this and we have some that are probably coming in right now. Okay. And I don't want marketing to be mad at me if <laughs> I don't answer any questions. So. Okay, so let's do All that. All right. Yeah, let's go, go over to the we're cabin. We're over there. We're inside today. Did you tell everybody why we're inside? Because it's... We're so inside because nice it's a li we're inside because it's a little it's a little cold yeah. outside. So. Um, but we're gonna go into our log cabin first. We're gonna cut to a commercial, so uh, we want you guys to have a, a look at some of the products and things that we're featuring. So we'll be back in a few moments. Okay. Perfect. So welcome back. Uh, we're in our log cabin now. This was actually built with a Norwood sawmill. Yes. So, I mean, it's a little drafty in the winter because we're missing some I'd walls. I'd like to put a wood stove somewhere about that corner there. Or, or finish some walls. Maybe the roof would keep yeah. the snow out. But other than that, it's a beautiful cabin. And it's done with our log molder. It's done with our HG36. So yeah. it's... It's incredible what you guys can do with these mills, um, and, and we want to talk about those features. Um, I know you, spe you specifically wanted to talk a little bit about the portable sawmills, the ultimate guidebook. Yeah. Um, what are the benefits of that ultimate guidebook? You guys can call in and you can order that book. We really don't charge anything for the book. It's just the shipping you were saying. So yeah. um, tell them a little bit more about the book. What's in there? What, what can they expect to find? Right out of the gate with the book. Right out of the gate. Right out it's of the fresh gate. on my mind. Right so out of the gate. that's what you gave okay, me. Guys, that's what I'm running with. I, I, it's good. And I'm passionate about this book. This book is amazing. Um, it is no charge. We will send it to you free. You just have to pay for the shipping. It has so many answers to so many questions that if I'd have had this when I first started running a sawmill, what I would have been able to do instead of trying to figure it out and doing it wrong three times before you do it right, would have been amazing. So, you know, guys, it's got plans on he in here on uh, on solar kilns, uh, on basic, a couple of little basic projects and structures that you want to do, quarter sawing, how to properly grade, how they grade, just so many wonderful different things. So, um, if you have any questions or you're you you know you're passionate about what you're doing and you want to educate yourself a little bit more, give us a call. Take advantage of uh, of this book. Awesome. Yeah. Sweet. So just to bring that up. Just to bring that up, and now it's brought up, and we'll move on. We'll move on. But great book to buy, guys. Yeah. Um, one thing, we want to answer questions, and I know we're, we're getting questions in. Okay. Um, so 
A uh, few things that we want to kind of go over are some, uh, well, basically, Travis uh, Jordan from Calgary sent us in a question just before we did the live stream, so he can't be with us, but I'm sure he's going to watch afterwards. Okay. One of his questions was about book matching grains. Yep. Um, we had a conversation about that, and, and you, you really have great knowledge with, with book matching grains. It's becoming a more popular feature, and guys are really wanting it. So, yeah. so how, about, how do you go about doing that with a portable sawmill? Well, most guys that have been cutting uh, have already cut book-matched grains. So they don't even know that they've probably done it, though, because uh, mm -hmm. you're just you're busy, you're cutting, you're pulling the boards off the machine as you're cutting them. But book-matching is something... Well, let's explain what book-matching yeah. is, I guess, to start with for those of us maybe who don't know. So what book-matching is, is if you get a piece of any piece of the log that you can mirror the image on. Okay, so if you cut this board and then flip it over and this board underneath it basically is identical and you put those two side by side, you now have book matched pieces. Um, and there's a couple of ways that you can do that. Um, sometimes guys will get to a point in the log or they'll see this specific crotch or this big limb mark that's growing in there and they'll be like, oh, that's awesome. I wonder how I can get that uh, to be more. Well, typically for tables, what we want 30, 40 inches so most guys are doing this with bigger stuff. And they'll cut three sides, knowing that this is going to be the side of what you want to be book matched, and leave this side live. They'll cut that board off, just like I said. They'll then flip it, and they'll cut the mirror side of that off, and then so they can marry those together. Now that's one way to do it. The other way to do it is to cut it right down to what you want, and then stand it up and split it in half that way. But um, it's really like everything to do with saw milling, it's a learn by doing. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's the same as saying, how do you quarter saw? Well, there's a whole bunch of different ways you can quarter saw. There's a whole bunch of different ways you can do book match cuts as well. Uh, it's really just a matter of splitting it in that specific point that you can get those two sides to come together and mirror each other. Yeah. Um, and you can talk about it a lot, but until you actually start to do it, uh, then you'll see what you got to do and figure it out. Oh, I got to flip this that way so that this will match when I cut it. Yeah. You know, because you can't just take everything off the same side and flip it around. Um, so hopefully that answers his question with that. Uh, burls are the same. A lot of guys will do that for cutting blanks for burls, for turning bowls and stuff. Yep. Um, they want them cut down like that so they can get those grains and those orders. Um, yeah. Perfect. Hopefully that answers that awesome. question for him. I hope it does, and if it didn't, please write in, because... And again, there's book matching uh, in here. Get out. There is. There's book no matching in the, in the Ultimate Guidebook. I just thought of it. It is the Ultimate Guide. It is the Ultimate it's Guide. It's the Ultimate Guide. Yeah. Perfect. It is. There I like what you did there. You took it back. I took it That's, back to the book. Well, you see? You're calling order the book. <laughs> it's, it's free. It's important. It's, it's free. free. You're just paying shipping, you're and you're getting all the shipping. information we're talking about. Plus more, Trevor comes with the book. No. So, no. No. Okay. No, but so it's just got a lot of really good stuff. The shipping's really expensive because Trevor comes with it. But. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, cool. Well, that's awesome. Thank you for that knowledge. I'm heavy. It's like um, gold. Gold's thanks heavy. again, Travis. Thank you for that question. That's a great question. That was a good question. Um, we do have another question from Matt Atkins from Facebook. So Matt uh, is wondering, what is the biggest profit eater of a mill operation? Is it, bill is it blades? Is it fuel? What, um, what can you expect money-wise when running a mill? You know, I'm going to kind of lead with that probably where you don't expect it to go. And the biggest cost of operation is the operator. Because if you have somebody or you're cutting and you don't have the knowledge necessary to create the results that you need from what you're cutting, you're just burning a lot of money. You know, and when we talk about uh, cross-cutting the grain and using the toe boards so you're cutting level with the pith, that type of thing is so critical and that'll cost you so much money. After that material dries and it starts to cup and warp and twist because it was cut improperly, mm -hmm. huge money factor. So please make sure you educate yourself to the point that you know you can create those good results. That aside, um, blades for sure. you got to account for blades. Um, you know, it's a $25 blade and you're going to go through, if you're cutting all day, if you're running, a, you know, some sort of a commercial operation, you're probably going to use two, three blades a day anyway. Mm -hmm. um, and then fuel uh, on top of that and then seasonal maintenance. 
uh, you know, oil change, oil filter, all that type of thing. Uh, but other than that, the machines are very, very hardy. Uh, they don't require a whole lot of uh, maintenance and do this and do that. you got to grease the band wheels on them. I tell guys to do that every day. If they're running them every day, grease them every day. It, it doesn't hurt a thing. Uh, it saves you from having a failure, right? Um, maybe belts. So there's another 60 or 70 bucks there. But uh, the cost of operation in terms of um, wear points is very, very low. So you could pretty much count on fuel and blades, like what he's suggested mm -hmm. there, and and then wages or whatever you might have to account for in that uh, and add that together and be pretty close to your daily operating cost. Can you explain blades a little bit more? Because I, I get a lot of questions in particular when I'm on the phone with guys that are, that are about blades and they're actually quite shocked that you're going to get about two to three hours of cutting with their blade. Right. So explain why that is. Um, well, that, that, so they can better understand, I guess, why why they're only going to get about two, three hours. Yeah, see, that scares everybody, and you tell them that. You're like, oh, yeah, you're only going to get two hours of cutting on your blade. They're like, oh, my God, two hours. But it's not two hours of standing around. It's two hours of that blade actually in the log cutting, right? Yeah. Which, realistically, is only about a third of the time that you're at the machine. The rest of it is loading the log, tailing the lumber, getting rid Rotating of the slabs. Rotating uh, You know, turning it, manipulating it, doing all of that stuff. So two hours in the cut really could turn into three quarters of a day for the average guy, if not a whole day yep. worth of cutting. So like if you're working alone and you're still fairly green at using the machine, um, you're going to go through probably a blade a day. Would be safe to mm -hmm. assume. Um, you know, so, but I mean, let's talk about board feet now off of those blades. So it's like, oh, it's $25. I just burnt 25 bucks today. Well, out of that $25, even if you're a brand new Sawyer, you're still, you're just learning how to use your machine. I'm going to bet you probably cut 11, 12, maybe 1500 board feet of wood with one blade. Mm -hmm. So for what <clears throat> you've achieved versus what it cost you, way, way outweighs it. So. And is that running that blade to completely dull? That would depend on the operator. Uh, most guys do, yeah. uh, we, and I'm guilty of that too. You run the blade till she starts giving you poor results and you take it off. Yep. That's the norm. Uh, some guys are really diligent, you know, and they'll run it for an hour. They got a good system going and that's awesome. Uh, I'm not that guy. I run it till it doesn't cut, put another blade on, keep cutting. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> Which is most, most guys. That's I, most I, guys. I, yeah. That's most guys. They don't have time. And you know what? You tell them it's going to take five, ten minutes to sharpen a blade. And they're like, nope, just give me a new one. Yeah. You know, because they got over a thousand board feet out of that 25 bucks, it's worth it to them. Yep. So. Cool. Yeah. Uh, we have a, a question from Lee Buckingham from Washington. Um, basically his question is about tow board placement. So he's running a little bit longer of an operation. Okay. Um, he placed his tow boards, he has a log loader, okay. placed his tow boards at log loader length. Hyd hydraulic machine or manual machine? So did he say? Uh, he didn't really say. Didn't he just say. said he okay. has log, load, log loading and ramp package, so I'm assuming so it's manual, manual, yeah. Okay. Um, so he's placed his tow boards at, the, at either side of log loader rails. Okay. Um, his question is about the placement of the tow boards wanting to level out that log, obviously. Um, maybe you can answer where's the best placements, even on a longer mill or a shorter mill, to put, because you get two. Right. So everything on a mill... Uh, guys, when you're putting it together, when you're building it, modifying it, changing it, doing whatever you're doing, everything on a mill must run around eight feet. Okay, so you got to have a rest at eight feet, a rest at eight feet, and you got to be able to clamp. So you got to be able to clamp, cut, and manipulate eight feet. So the tow boards should be really, really close to wherever your rests are. Um, because if you can tip eight feet, you can tip 10, you can tip 12. Okay, because you're only going to tip it up front or back, and it's only for two cuts. Yep. Okay, so uh, the log will hold together if it's pushed up in that position for two cuts. It won't uh, bend or it shouldn't bend or twist on you. Um, but always around eight feet. Um, once you start stepping past, say, cutting 12s, now you need to either think about, okay, I've got to move a log rest in a dog or I need to add a log rest in a dog. Um, and you can buy half sets. And you can buy half sets, yeah. I mean, depending on which mill and machine you have, we have all those accessories available for anybody that's modifying or changing or upgrading or what have you with your machine. So Yeah. 
Okay. Cool. Which brings me to my next question. So you said manipulating eight feet. Yes. All right. So we have a question from Jim Stam from Utah. So thank you, Jim, for tuning in. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in. First off, thank you guys for sending us in your questions because yeah. that's These what are we're... really good. I'm, I'm amazed every time we do this at the questions. It's really good. Well, and that's what it's for, yeah. right? It, it, this has been such a great um, experiment for us to, yeah. to see all the questions that we can't possibly get to in a on a daily basis over the phone. So to have you guys be able to tune in and have multiple people hearing these questions is amazing. So it is. again, thank you to everyone who's tuned into Facebook and tuned into all of our live feeds. Um, thank you for your questions. Thank you for taking the time to send those questions in because it really makes this worthwhile doing. And um, we're seeing some great results and some great feedback from it. So well, I like today in particular because we're inside in the cabin. Yes. It's nice. And we're not actually working on it. It's actually nice. This is great. Yes. This is great. Dude, we get to just relax. <laughs> I brought you water, and you didn't even thank me for it. Thank by you. The way. You're welcome. For the water, sir. Um, so, moving back to Jim. I should put it in this plant, by the looks of it. I you were wants, in charge of taking care I of that I think he plant. wants some water. Anyway, Jim has a question, <laughs> Trevor. So, if we could stay on point Okay, here, all right. Let's stay that on would point. be great. Okay. Okay, Jim, sorry about that delay. But your question is, um, can your mills be adapted to saw shorter planks, like maybe three or four feet? So we just talked about eight feet. So Jim's like reading my mind. You're going to be backpedaling here, I think. He's reading my mind. I was actually just asking if we could build a kit for this exact purpose. And the answer to the question is yes, absolutely. So, so many guys now are buying their machines or own their machines and everybody's diving into this urban salvage reclaimed lumber stuff. And of course, none of those are cut to standard log length pieces which we would expect or what you know is considered the norm you know eight foot six ten foot six all of these numbers so guys are cutting burls and crotches and root balls and all of this kind of thing which uh, is and beautiful. Burls yeah, are oh, it's beautiful. amazing what they're getting out of these you know you talk about book matching cuts uh you start cutting those crotches and book and flat siding one of them and then book ma matching those together they look really really cool um so yeah, what you got to do is you got to add a bunk and you got to add another dog and a rest. Um, that'll shorten you up to roughly two feet. So you'll have, you know, a, a two foot spot. I mean, you can play around with that, but if you're supported at two feet, it's probably pretty good. Um, and then what you got to do is put your other rest and your other dog in there and, and you're good to uh, go. say la vie, away you go. Yeah, it, uh, yeah, and that's the beauty with our machines. So you already own it. Now you're thinking, hmm. I want to do that, but how the heck do I keep it and support it? Well, it's no problem. Just order a cross plank and another dog, and away you go. So yeah. Yeah, the, the kit is definitely a huge selling feature. Um, again, what we've talked about, you can customize and grow with your mill without oh, having yeah. to learn a new one, without having the the burden of selling one, yeah. um, just to get a new one. So yeah, which is not generally a profitable thing. So yeah, yeah. No, nope. I hear you. Mm -hmm. We have another question coming in though. Oh. Can we stay on point with this one and we just can. get to the question I'm with you. instead Let's of go. you wandering off track? Let's go. Like, my job is to keep you focused. Let's go. As I wander off track, let's get to Russell's question, okay? So Russell, Russell House on Facebook. So um, his question is, after first slabbing a cut, why do you only turn the log 90 degrees and not 180? That's a good question. Why do you do that? That's why we're here. Russell's you, got the questions. Do you know why you do that? Well, I no. could answer it, but okay. you answer it. Right, You're the I'm master sawyer. So there really is no, there really <laughs> is no good answer. Um, but the easy answer is because it's the quickest way to get to the end result. So when I'm first teaching guys how to cut, if I'm with them for any amount of time on the sawmill, I do that first cut, and then we flip it over on its belly, and then we make the second cut, and then we stand it up. The reason for that is, is because your blade is laying perfectly horizontal, and then you get two perfectly vertical lines to look at. So as well as using your rest, you can use your eye and train your eye to see that 90 degrees. Mm -hmm. um, when you're first learning how to use the machine and you make that first cut and you just turn it 90 degrees and you're just using that one line against your blade to make that perfect square, it sometimes is difficult. So if you can create two of those, it's a lot easier. Um, so I'm, I'm not opposed to either method just know that if you're going to flip it all the way around to its belly for that first cut, 
uh, that you're just creating an extra turn in the equation. But there's no problem, none at all. Uh, some guys actually like doing it too because what if you cut that way, uh, you can eliminate one of the bark side cuts. So you gain a little bit of blade life out of that too. So, because if you can cut into clean material, it'll, it'll save you some time. Good so, point. It'll, it'll gain you some time on your yeah. blade, I guess is a better way to say so it. So you'll add an extra turn, but you'll maybe Maybe, maybe your prolong blade your blade life, life. yeah, because you're not running it through the bark, right? If you can stay out of that yep. bark, then it'll, it'll help you with uh, blade life too, so. Awesome. Mm -hmm. You're good. Yeah. You're really good. Oh, sometimes. Yeah, yeah, there's days that's that a you're good, off. I'm just, I'm telling you, I'm amazed at the questions we get. These are good questions. They're, well, they're not questions that I would think of, so, but we deal with it every day. Mm -hmm. So they're mm -hmm. awesome. Thank you, guys. Again, it's, it's real-world questions and real-world um, issues that we're having. That It's neat because these are all questions that I had when I first started cutting, but nobody was around to answer them for me. Mm-hmm. Right, which is why I'm so happy to be able to share because there still isn't hardly anybody around to share with you to tell you this stuff, you know. It yeah, it's funny because we look at maps and we we, we kind of can see where mills are and we have a lot of mills out there. Yeah, but it's still not a huge um, huge community. It's a huge community socially, but as far as being able to go down the street and, people and work are private, with your neighbor. Yeah. People are private. People don't want to be bugged and don't want people on their property. And I get it. Yeah. I'm, I'm one of those guys. You know, uh, you if are, I know you're, you've never even had me over. You know, if I know you're coming, <laughs> I'll welcome you with open arms. But I mean, if I don't know you're, who you are, you probably shouldn't be creeping around, right? And I think yeah. still that's the way it is for yeah. most people. If they don't know you. Yeah. So, but that's the whole reason for us doing this. Yeah. So and that, share. again, that's one of the other things that we've implemented with our customers is the referral program, um, which is amazing that we're getting so much great feedback with nice that. Nice lead, and I wanted to with, talk about that. With owners coming forward and saying, you know what, yeah, I'd love to show my mill yes. off. Yes. Because just like you, they've been milling for years, and they know where they started and then the questions that they had. Yes. And if they can help someone and show someone something, it's a great program that we have. And sometimes they turn into friendships. I've talked to a lot of guys that have bought machines, and the guys who they went to look at the mill for the reference, they're buddies now. Yeah. Like, they actually have, have sparked up a friendship, which is cool. Um, but that kind of rolls into, can I, can I go into that? Sure, go ahead. So not everybody knows. You can knows, go wherever you want. Can we do that? Okay, so we have a reference program, you know, I mean, because you, you share with everybody. But a lot of people ask, how can I see your machine? Where do I go to see your machine? Well, we're direct. Everything you order comes right from us to you. And I mean, there's many benefits in that, uh, especially costs and, and, and time. And it just makes things a little bit easier for everybody. Uh, but one of the downfalls of that is, is that we, we're not everywhere to go and touch the machines and look at them. So what we have available is a reference program. And as Derek just pointed out, we have a lot of owners all over the country uh, that on their own accords have phoned and said, hey, we would like to be on your reference program. We want to show our machines. So if you're anywhere and you know you just need to have your hands on and you need to touch that machine and, and get that physical experience with it and just hear from another owner, yeah, this is what I thought it would be, give us a call. Uh, we'll help you locate that person with that machine and, uh, and uh, get you pointed towards them and, and go from there. So. Really good program. I think more people should take advantage of it. Mm -hmm. It's a huge benefit. Um, the, the difference from people that see the mill run and are confident in even just the purchase program and purchasing what they've seen and what they know they need as opposed to the person coming in who's just researched marketing videos or seen, seen it run on a commercial on TV but has been actually seen it live yeah. in action is totally different. The yeah. experience is different. Yeah. The knowledge is different. So, yeah. I mean, you can get on the website and find out where we do all our shows, you know, and we do like 20 of them a year. So we do really hard uh, and we try hard to get out there to show guys the machines, but that doesn't put us in everyone's backyard either. So, mm -hmm. And I believe you meant like we'll be in California in February, I believe some other ones. And well, next year's schedule is still uh, being finalized but yeah i mean we've got california texas we're looking at kentucky 
Um, and then, you know, all of our standard mm -hmm. ones, uh, we got Maine and a bunch yeah, of... You already told me I was going to California. So. Oh, was that? Okay. <laughs> no. All right. Well, you're for sure. Yeah. No, now I am, because it's yeah. live. You're committed yeah. now, right? Yeah. I've been bugging him for a while to go to this show. So. Ashlyn and I did not say that. <laughs> he, he did. <laughs> he did. It's a fact. Um, um, we have another question coming in. Um, okay. And then what I want to do is talk a little bit more about that promotion, to spend some time on that promotion. Yeah. And then we do have some... Uh, little kits here that we want to show you guys. Yeah, you keep talking. I'm just going to get this ready. Yeah, no, you did. Okay? You just, well, you pulled out the knife. And I don't want to worry. I don't so, want to take you off track. Um, what we're going to do is, uh, Trevor's got a knife, so this turned into a dangerous I situation. Put I put it down. Um, but uh, we, we are doing a promotion, and I know I already kind of mentioned it, but if you joined us a little bit late, um, the promotion that we have is our fallback promotion. So it's a great promotion right now going on. We're falling back to last year's prices to help guys. Uh, maintain those prices. Uh, we have value bundles, added value bundles. We went over a few of the uh, accessories that you can get in those value bundles. Um, so uh, it's a great time to call in, speak to any one of our specialists. Phone number again is 1-800-567-0404. Uh, you can talk to any one of our sales specialists or anyone in this building, really, um, about uh, the programs that we have going on right now. That promotion is only running until November 15th, 2018. So there's very limited time left in it. That's only another nine days before that promotion's over. So please take advantage of it because you're getting great savings. Um, some of the mills, it's up to... Eighteen, nineteen hundred dollars. Yeah, I've seen off of the mill. Getting up like, there. Yep. it's it's a great value in that. All right, um, we're going to talk about some of the log molding blades that actually built this cabin. Uh, we're going to talk about uh, quick fit uh, uh, guide. Guide retrofit. Guide yes. retrofit. There you yes. go. That's it. Yeah. Um, and I just want to get to one question. Yeah, go. Cool. Um, from Arthur Woe, and he wants to know if uh, we can resharpen blades. Definitely we can resharpen blades, uh, typically two to three times. Um, yeah. not, not nor would. We won't take your blades back and sharpen them for no, you. No, we don't have a sharpening service. We have two sharpeners available that you can purchase. Uh, one's called a standard sharpener, one's called a pro sharpener, so it just kind of depends on your budget and um, what works best for you. But certainly they can be sharpened. Definitely lets you take your investment to the, to the max as if you buy a sharpener. Well, um, you would you would recommend how many sharpens per blade? Three, probably tops. So this is one thing that I tell my guys when uh, when I talk to them on the phone, and they're kind of interested or curious about that sharpener. Our standard sharpener, by the time you sharpen your first box of blades three times, that sharpener's paid for itself. Correct. So, it. All you need to do is buy one box of blades and the sharpener, and the value that you're going to get out of that sharpener for the remainder of your use on that mill yeah. is incredible. Huge. Huge. I talked to guys that, you know, initially will buy their machine uh, with two boxes of blades and a sharpener, and then you don't hear from them for two years. Yeah. Because they've been sharpening their it's own true. blades. So it's So it's very, very worth while um, you know a lot of the time you may not sharpen the blades religiously you'll just use a new one but I'll tell you what if your buddy phones you on a Sunday and he's got this great big piece of whatever that's been in his front yard that looks awesome but I guarantee it's full of every nail and every spike and rock that a kid from the last 20 years has stuck in there and put around it so he brings it over and he says hey can you cut this for me and you say yeah sure let's cut this up you think you got three or four blades and you're good mm -mm. you'll burn through all of those in a hurry because it's full of debris it's Sunday, where are you going to get more blades? You got a sharpener, you can always make the old blade cut. So, or usually yep. you can anyway, unless you totally destroy it. But So it, it, it has other, other good purposes as well, as awesome. just being, making your investment go the long way. Perfect. Mm -hmm. You're, it blows me away how knowledgeable you are. You know, I just, I just like to share. So do we, get to, do we get to talk about this now? You, if you'd like to. Do okay. you want to? I do want it's to. It's your world, so. I do want to. Okay. This is the retrofit. Well, what this is, this is the ceramic blade guide system is what it is, I guess we could call the it. The retrofit. That. But it is the, this package right here we call the retrofit kit because LM29 owners, LM2K owners, uh, I don't know, Cole, if you can see that, this goes on the machine in place of your blade guide roller. Okay, so I'm just going to stand this up here like this. So now your blade guide roller, when it's on the machine, it's just applying pressure down on that blade, right? Which is good, and it works well. Um, but if you take it off and you put this on, this goes over top of the blade, 
and then it gets one of these lovely little ceramic pieces in the bottom, and one in the top, and then one goes in the back right here, and then your blade sits right there in the middle. Well, now it sandwiches the blade in there. So you want to talk about getting a little bit more control of your cut and maybe trying to dial up some of those, some of those uh, resources. You got a piece of walnut there or something you've really been wanting to chew into, but you want it to be right, right on. This will help. Um, so adding a retro, a, a ceramic retrofit kit to the LM29, the MN26, the LM2K, the older machines, worth every single penny. Um, so if that's something you're interested in or you want to talk more about, give us a call. What are the benefits? It'll lessen the deflection on the blade, right? So right now, you're trapping the blade from coming up. This is going to try and trap the blade from going down as well. So it'll just give you a little bit better uh, results on your cuts, probably a little bit closer to what you're looking for. Um, maybe stop it from wandering on you. If you're cutting with the throat wide open, yeah. this might help. The roller guides, I find too, they're because it's metal on metal, create a little bit more friction and heat. I mean, you have the lube system, which will, which will yeah. cool it down. But yeah. ceramic is a natural absorb absorber, right? Yeah. So it'll actually pull heat well, from this your is, blade a yeah, little bit. Yeah, this is better. actually the same stuff. I got told it's on the outside of the shuttle. This ceramic is the exact same thing. So yeah, it's that tough. It's really, really tough stuff. So. Yeah, I just wanted to bring that up, show you guys that there's some options for you. Um, if you're looking to up your game a little bit and uh, get a little bit tighter results. Produce beautiful might, cuts. This might help. Beautiful. Yeah. So that's, you, that's yeah. all I had on that. Awesome. That's great. Yeah. Thank you for bringing that up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What else do you got? Do you, do you, well, why don't we talk about some blades? So. I know people are curious about the log molder. We kind of went into detail and showed people the log molder last live feed. Yeah. Um, but there's still questions. People still have great questions regarding what type of knives do I need? What do your knives do? What, like, do I need a drum? Do I, like, an extra drum? What? Yeah, I didn't grab a drum. Um, I noticed that. But I mean, that. that's pretty, that's pretty standard for us yeah. to, I mean, to, to talk about. What I did do, though, is I grabbed D profile, which is under your ultimate guidebook. Yeah, this, these knives. So this is the D knife, guys. This is what goes in when you want to create the profile that you can see on the outside of this wall right here. Um, so that's how you make that. You want that? It's like show and tell. Yes, yes please. Oh, yeah. Ooh. Yeah. Ah. I know. And these <laughs> will hold up are your upper and lower profile knives. Right? So this is what you need to be able to create this whole profile is these three knives right here. That one, this one, and this one. And you can build this if you own that machine. Tongue Groove D Profile, traditional Tongue Groove D. D Profile. And these all come in a kit, all three of these knives. So if you're looking at the packaging uh, for the LX26 uh, and you look at the three knife package or the profile package I think we call it in the catalog this is the three knives that'll have and yeah. then the planing blades automatically come with it so yeah I'm just gonna do a quick check and I don't know if we want to go we're just checking in here what are we gonna take a sec we might go to commercial are we gonna go to a commercial we're, we're gonna cut to a commercial cut to a commercial the, yeah yeah so we're cutting to a commercial. So thank you guys so much for tuning in. Again, we're just going to take a quick break. We'll be back very, very soon. Um, check out some of our stuff, and we'll talk a little bit more about the promotion, and we'll answer some more of your questions. Again, thank you guys for tuning in, and we'll be back after this short break.
and welcome back. Welcome back. We're back. We're back. Welcome back. You that can was often, a show. Yes. That was a show. Yeah, you can often hear me singing in here. and I hear you singing. All I the hear time. You singing all the time. I know. I, I don't know if you guys get annoyed with it or if you guys are like, hey, he's really good. He should be on like The Voice or something. I tune it out. So if I tune it out. Blake I'm, Shelton, if you're watching. Not in a rude way. I'm not saying that it's, I'm not tuning you out in a rude way. But I'm, you know, I'm working, right? So yeah, but subconsciously you're really listening to it and done. you really like it. Yeah. Yes. I, well, if you feel I better, appreciate it. If you feel better with that thought, then I <laughs> will nod. You ready to answer some more questions? Because we have some awesome questions I flying in. I will okay? answer. To stop. the best of my abilities, You're I really will pulling me off today because you keep pulling me off track and I'm trying to keep us on track. Giver. You have gotten really good at that. You have your hands on the wheel, so steer this ship. Oh, I, okay. I'll take that. All right. We have Alfie. Um, and Alfie wants to know what's the, wor what's the most, what's the worst, what's the most difficult wood to mill? Oh. It, it's almost a depends who you ask. <laughs> I don't know. Um, I've never, I mean, I know what's the most difficult for me, so I can share that. Um, and I mean, I haven't cut everything across the country. I've cut a lot of different species now because been able to get some different stuff, different places in the world, uh, or North America anyway. Um, but ash, I find ash very difficult to cut and get the results that I want when cutting ash. Why is that? Because it's so, it's, a, it's what they call a sprung grain. So it's, it's, it grows under tension and under pressure. Uh, the bottom of uh, ash trees they actually use to make cricket bats. Um, because it's that spring-loaded type of uh, material. So as a consequence of that, when you're cutting it, I've been halfway through a cut on some of that stuff, cutting, you know, eight inches, 10 inches wide, and you, the board will start walking right off of the other end where you started cutting, and you're only six feet into the cut because it's that tensioned. So you really have to work your way around and try and remove the stress out of the log as you're cutting it. Um, Spruce can be difficult too, because it's so full of knots, especially if it's been down for a little while and it's dried, because uh, the knots always harden at a different rate than the rest of the log does, right? Yeah. So the blade naturally wants to just follow the path of least resistance. So if you're trying to cut that wide open, you know, you'll get some of this kind of a motion in the blade and it'll try and, I call it surfing, either under or over. Um, and that happens because it goes from making a, a, a rip to a cross cut which is why when you start playing with the different pitches on the blade and degrees, you can transition some of that better. And again, the adjustable blade guide is going to give you a little bit more tension. It'll there. help you. It'll help a little bit. Because you can get into a tighter tolerance with the adjustable guide, right? You're not just sitting wide open all the time. Yeah. Um, but I, I find ash to be my most difficult. You know, guys think that some of the hardest woods are the most difficult to cut. They're not. That's just about having enough power in the right blade. Yeah. And, and they usually cut very, very well. So. Yep. I've heard guys talk about cedar and teak um, in particular, just, just for longevity of blade life. It's, yeah. it's a pain because it's like cutting sandpaper. So you're going through blades a lot sooner and quicker than you would with really almost any other. You are. Those trees drink uh, silt or silica. They just pull it right up into them, and yeah, it's like cutting sandpaper. It's, it's easy to cut. The saw has no problem doing it, but it's very hard on blade life yeah. because it takes the edge right off of them in a hurry. So. It's great knowledge, man. I appreciate you being here with me. I will share away. I don't think Ashlyn will let me do this on my own, so you kind of <laughs> have, have to she be might. here. She might. She's pretty awesome. She yeah. might. Yeah. yeah. You could deal without me, but... Yeah. <laughs> the other way would just be pointless, I think. Here's so, Derek. And go. <laughs> uh, another question uh, from Facebook. Uh, are all the mills on a trailer or are some without? All the mills start on the ground and then you add a trailer. Uh, so that's a super common question that everybody likes to ask and you probably get it all the time too. Uh, and that's because when you look at the pictures, and it's like any other picture of anything else in the world. We're going to show it to you with every option that's on it that you can get for it, right? Mm -hmm. You know, you go look at a vehicle, they show it with every power option it has. Um, so they don't start out with all of those pieces on them. They start out as a ground model, base unit, 
and then you can add the trailer package, you can add the log loader, and then everything else uh, from there as an accessory. So, yeah. so the best thing to do is probably give us a shout, 1-800-567-0404. Yeah, oh, for talk, sure. to, talk to a specialist here. We'll be able to go over all your mill needs, um, yeah. and we'll be able to add those on so you have a better idea of where you're going to end up price point-wise. Um, trailers are a great option, but there's many accessories that... Um, don't come standard with the mill. I mean, if you want to buy just the mill, you're able to mill right out of the box. Yeah. Um, you will get great wood and, and, and great results from it. Yeah. But to make your life easier as a sawyer, there's lots of accessories and lots of things that we add on to that. Well, it that, depends uh, on your needs and your budget yeah. and all of that stuff, right? Yeah. So, again, 1-800-567-0404. Give us a shout. Talk to any one of our specialists. Um, Have you noticed that our specialists are all being very quiet? Very quiet. Today? I, they don't like the camera, I don't what think. What is with that? It's only us two that like anyway, the camera. back on track. Back on track. Back See, on again, track. you're good. <laughs> um, but uh, one last thing. We're, we're about to wrap it up here. We've asked a lot of questions. We've answered, well, we haven't asked them. You guys have asked them. We've answered a lot of questions. Thank you guys again for tuning in, for asking those questions. That's what makes this completely worthwhile. Um, we do have a promotion going on. Again, I know I, I know I keep bringing it up, but I can't stress it again or enough. This is a well, amazing, nine days, fifteenth. Nine like days. It's, it's like an it's amazing now. promotion. Yeah. You have until November fifteenth to place your orders and pay for it, um, and you're going to get our 2017 prices with some value add-ons. So log rest actuators is one example. You get those completely free with the HD36 if you call in. That's one of the value bundles. You get to choose, so we can go over those with you. Um, so November 15th, call 1-800-567-0404. Ask for any one of our specialists. You can talk to them. Thank you guys for tuning in. We really appreciate this. Thank you, Trevor, for being with me, um, for answering those questions, and for being the Thank professional. Thank you, Derek, for being a gracious host. And sir. specialist that you are. We appreciate it. Thank you. Um, thank you for all your knowledge, and thank you guys. We really appreciate you guys. Keep those questions coming in because I'm sure we're going to continue to do these. Um, we they seem to be making an impact on you guys and really helping you guys out. And that's what means the world to us is uh, great results and being able to help you guys out. So, again, thank you so much. We appreciate it. Everyone who's tuned in, we hope you guys have an amazing day. And uh, I think uh, we're going to wrap it up and, and we're, we'll do this another time. Perfect. All right.